precious fruit of the earth, and have long patience for it until he receives the earth and latter rains. Be you also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. I want to read that again. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold the husbandman waiting for the precious fruit of, of the earth, and have long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. Be you also patient, establish your heart, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. I want to say something about a part of that verse, the early and latter rains. I'm not going to preach on that. Uh, there is a message in that for the Old Testament uh, that we could preach on concerning early and latter rains. But I want y'all to notice, and you've already noticed it, the rain that we're getting right now, right? What do you think maybe that rain might be for? I told we were talking this morning that for the person who's a logger, a lot of rain is frightful because that's their livelihood. Unless they happen to be on a high place where they can, they, it doesn't affect them. But generally speaking, a logger and a lot of rain, it, there's conflict between the two. But what's happening is the Lord is preparing with these rains now a time of endurance because the trees are starting to, are starting to, the sap starting to rise, and this is part of the plan of God. And what looks like a bog and a mess to us in a few days will be dry and gone because it is, God is, has, is preparing for this time that we're going through. And then the, uh, the, it'll go through that season and the buds will come out and and I was talking to someone the other day about uh, the plum trees, but how we don't ever get plums anymore because they bloom so early. We get a false day and a uh, false time, and it blooms so early, and then the cold will come and kill the blossom and the fruit, and we never get the fruit. Y'all know what I'm talking about, amen? I wait every year. I, I, plums are one of my favorites. I can stand there under a plum tree and eat plums right on. I'm as bad as about plums as... as, as some people are about other things, but I just I'm just so thankful. Uh, but uh, just I just want to throw that in. But I, I was query, I was inquiring to the Lord, and I was I was saying, Lord, after all this great uh, series of meetings we've had, the great word that we've heard, and I, I just Lord, what is it that we as a church family and we as your people need to hear? This is it, right? Here. This is it. This is what, what God gave me to bring to you this morning. And so I'm going to bring it, and you just take it, do with it what you will, because here's, here's kind of an overview of where we're going. Number one, uh, I know every one of you, you're lovable, good, and kind people, and I love you and appreciate you, but I know you're going to do what you want to do. It, it don't matter what other people think about what your decisions are. You're just flat going to make them and you're going to do them. And then have the audacity to defend them even when they're wrong. And so there's no need me as a pastor harping on where you're at anymore. The Bible said just preach the word of God. <coughs> Try to encourage the people that I'm coming. And maybe somewhere they'll get over their self and they'll start to realize how much they need me. And the things that I have sent, the things that I have given, Maybe they'll realize how rebellious of people they've been. And then maybe the scales will fall from their eyes and off their heart. And their decisions will change and be better. And that's where we are in our country. You can take two people and stand them side by side and look each other in the face. And they are so different about where we are as a country. It's, it's just really alarming to me. And we that same thing is, is moved into the church. We The church is the same way as the world is. I'm telling you, it used to be the other way around. The, work, the church changed the world. Today the world's changed the church. Yeah. Amen. And so that's what we're dealing with. And, and you don't know how to overcome it except by the power of the hand of God. Yeah. And so you just, have to, you just have to send that message that God has brought to you and let it lay at the feet of the people he sent it to. And, and preferably it will find a root into their heart. And, and it'll change your heart, your attitude. If it don't, there won't be no change. I mean, and that's, that's the whole thing about it. And, and so uh, we're, 
to debate the issues about who's right and who's wrong uh, is, is, is not, we don't have time for that anymore. Uh, you just go ahead and uh, I know that you that have been regular here for years, you know what a Christian ought to live like, you know what he ought to live like. And if you're not looking that way based on the Word of God, uh, you know you've got a problem. And so I, I'm just going to go from there. And if you're here today and you need Jesus, I will assure you before this message is over, I will cover the steps on how you can be saved today. Because without salvation, you cannot see Christ. Amen. Without being born again, you can't make it out of this world alive. And you just can't do it. Roger said this morning that uh, he, he didn't think people realize that second death. What that second death is going to be, and I don't either. I don't, I don't think that people realize what spiritual death is all about. And the, and the reward of spiritual death. I just don't think that. I, I And so, uh, you know, but it's not about the, the no snotter I got up here. It's about what the Lord said. And so let's begin in verse 7. He says, be patient. Be patient, therefore. Now, I'm going to tell you all, I, I still have not digested everything that we got. I, I'm still shouting about uh, the word that we got last week. I'm very thankful for that. Uh, my son, the preacher that came last week, but he didn't do it because he's my son. He did it because he's God called and God sent him. I'm so thankful for the word that he preached. And if you happen to miss some of it, I hope you got it on Facebook. And if you did, I, I just want you to take everything he said. He kind of stumbled a little bit on Sunday night and kind of rolled a little bit, but I'm going to tell you, you can see God just pick it up and take it and, and direct and lead I purposely, we usually sat on the phone for hours during the week. I purposely didn't talk to him. If he called, I, I made it very short. I didn't want to talk to him about nothing. I didn't want him to mention nothing. I didn't want to talk about who was here and who weren't here. didn't want to talk about nothing. I didn't want to influence nothing he said. And, and I had told him prior, previously, you just come on over to New Horizon. Don't preach about what you do. You preach what God gives you. Amen. And the church ain't where it was when you were here. The church ain't doing what she did when you were here. So don't come over here with what you think it ought to be. That's, that's my job. I'm the pastor. You come over here with the word of God and you preach what God gives you. And that's exactly what he did. And, and so the Lord spoke wondrously during our week. I, I don't know that anybody was saved, but I know that a lot of people were moved and touched uh, by what God did. And so, uh, but uh, we need to... to it's hard to be patient. Now, if y'all know me, uh, you know that it's hard for me to be patient. But I'm not going to say, Lord, teach me patience. Uh, because I, I, knew, I learned a long time ago, you better have a, a lot of stuff in order when you say, Lord, teach me patience. You ought to be ready if you really want to be taught patience. So what I did, before the Lord had to do stuff like that, I started working. I started seeking it, and I started coming to a place because I don't want God to have to teach me patience in my life. And so, but with the Lord's help, we got to the place where we're a little more patient than we've ever been. And so, but in the day in which we live, I tell you, uh, my patience is really thin. And it's thin uh, because of, of disappointment. It's thin because of disappointment, and uh, disappointment was sad. Disappointment with, with the, what we accomplish in the church. I'm talking about the church. The church of the living God. Uh, what we, we see around us and we see unfolding. Uh, we see uh, and everything's all right depending on what church you're in. Uh, you, uh, you can do what you want to. And, and that's not true. There's only one way, one Lord, one Spirit, one baptism, one God, one Father. That's it. Amen. And, but we, somehow or another, we, we've got... Uh, seminaries that have found more ways. We've got preachers that know better ways. We've got members that I think it's okay. They, they discovered a new word. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, we better rise up. We better wake up. Uh, there's a, a the real threat in our country today is in the church. It's, it's not those abortions that we all find so much pain about. God's going to take care of that. And Roger said this morning as he and I were here by ourselves, he said God's not going to let that pass. God's not going to let that pass. Y'all know that? So you might as well get ready. I mean, Alabama was the beginning point for pestilence. 
You know, and we God's not going to let it pass of uh, what's going on with these with these precious babies and, and people are killing them. He's not going to let that pass. He's not going to let this other stuff pass. So we we have to trusting in Him and being patient in Him is what we have to do. Yeah. It's hard uh, not to say what we think. Ain't it? It's hard not to inject our mouth into something and our opinions. But all that really matters is we've heard all week is the opinion of God's the only one that counts anyway. Amen. It's the only truth it is. Everything else apart from God is nothing but a lie, a deception. And that's what Satan's all about. When he took over this mess, ever how many hundred thousand years ago it was, in the garden back there, when he took it over, it's been took over until now. And the Lord has come and offered us a new way, which is Jesus Christ, a way to hope and glory and a way to salvation and a way to victorious living. We can't even live with each other. How can we live with God? Right. Amen. We, our homes are a mess. Our children are in chaos. How, how in the world can the church be a blooming flower, a, a sweet savior in the nostrils of God, when, when we can't do our stuff at home and, and we certainly can't do it at church? Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so those are the things we're dealing with. Those are the things that we're working with. Those are the things that, that when he's talking, we need to, I'm telling you, it, it's going to take patience to get through this stuff. And, and you know, you're going to wonder why when, when the, have you ever seen a tornado with a brick house blown all to pieces and a little shed building standing behind it, not one thing wrong with it? Yeah. It's, a, it's amazing to me how that happens. I'm, I'll tell you, it's amazing to me. Uh, yeah, be standing right there. Every tree in the community blown down, but there'll be one right there that always makes it. It's, that's, I'm telling you, God, it, and even in 170 mile an hour wind in a hurricane, God's in control. That's, right. that's what we got to realize. God is in control. And, and those things go uh, under his direction. Those things go. I want you to know God is in control of everything or he's in control of nothing. So he has a permissive will. But anyway, uh, in the midst of all this, the people of God, he's, he's singing out to the people of God to be patient. And we're not. You know it, and I know it. And, and everything else. Patient, we used to sing a song, uh, patiently waiting for Jesus to come. And I know you younger people only ain't never heard that. But there used to be a song with those words in it. Mother's not dead. She's only sleeping, patiently waiting for Jesus to come. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And Randy sings the song, Just a Place to Spend the Night. Uh, you know, we, said, we just can't give up death. There ain't no spending no night nowhere. They, them bodies are laying out there. They're just bodies. They're gone. But we can't, we can't even deal with the jaws of death. Death just keeps us enfolded in it. Why not let, you can't change it, let it go. The people that you know that are dead are dead. They're in the arms of Jesus if they were saved. And why do we want to see them again and love them again? They, hey, let me tell you, they're in the arms of Jesus Christ. Get over it. I've been there. My mama laying my chandra. I don't sit at the foot of her grave every week. It's a matter of mind over reality. You may, now look here. You mourn any way you want to mourn. But I'm just telling you, precious in the sight of the Lord or the death of his saints. And he said, he tried to assure us in every way that when that comes in our homes and, and to our loved ones, how we ought to deal with it. But we don't deal with it. Just like we don't deal with nothing else he says we ought to deal with the way we ought to. We deal with it our way. I preface this whole message by saying that we, we're going to do what we want to do no matter what. But we ought to be doing what he said. And that's, that's, that's my only point, sister. If you're offended by that, I'm sorry. That's just the way it goes. Being patient, being steadfast, and waiting in a time like this. I mean, come on, guys. We got a lot to face. We got more to... What if that been your son this morning? Huh? 
Hey, but Thomas Carraway, when I called him, he didn't know what he was going to do. No, he knew what he was going to do. Pray for me, Brother Tom. Hold me up, Brother Tom. He went all over himself because the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judge. Let me tell you something. This young man was playing around with drugs. And I guarantee you he overplayed it a little bit. I don't know that. But who needs to know that? But the point of it is, that's, that's life and the things that come to it. I was sound asleep when, when Chassie was slammed out there in the highway. I was sound asleep until the phone rang. When I come to an assistant, I didn't know what to do. I said, well, the only thing I know to do is go see what's happening. I went to see what's happening and went right by where she was at like I was a blind man, like God had blinded me. Laying right near the side of the road, I didn't even see it. You know why? Because God takes care of us in these things. And He's got, that's why he wants us to be patient and not overact to what's going on around us. Now look here. Why? There, if you drive all around the limits of Washington, D.C., it's not a city of grace. I'm going to tell you, don't expect no grace to pour out of the city of Washington, D.C. Don't expect, don't expect the Congress and Senate to be places full of grace. Because it's not going to happen. Don't expect somebody else uh, to pass laws that's going to make it better for you. That Jesus Christ said, if you follow me, you will suffer. You will suffer persecution. Look here, it's not going to be an easy way uh, for the church in this world that we live in. That means it's not going to be easy in your homes because your sons and daughters will rise up and rebellion against you and your home and your wife and your husband. Uh, you'll be divided. I didn't come to pull you together. I come to separate the spirits that are going on, the gods that are being worshipped, that are fake. Gods. Be patient. We got to be patient. I look at my, I, I, we have a teenager left in the grandchild ring, and he's be 19 here in May. Uh, he, teenagers, and teenagers are, are tough. I used to be one, uh, and I can remember. And I can remember how I wanted to do what I wanted to do, and I was contrary about it and sneaky about doing what I wanted to do. But I had a mama that I know and it taught me all truth. Just like looking at your faces, I know you have mamas and daddies that are have taught y'all the truth. But where are you at today in that truth that they taught you? Where am I at today in the truth that I've been taught? We can talk about all that the mess we want to talk. But when, when I lay down and, and it comes my time and my appointment with the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ, what's it going to be like for me? That's the thing I need to know about. And I'm going to tell you something. He's not going to say bring an excuse slip for all them times you've gone and done. He's not going to say that. But we think he is. We think we pull the wool over the eyes of the Savior of the world. We think we can instruct God of how good we've been when we ain't been good for nothing. We think we can trick God and surprise Him with our lives. I'm going to tell y'all something. You ain't going to do it. Tell you right now, it ain't going to happen. And the reason we can't be patient is we're scared He'll come now. Because if He comes now, we'll be like the church of Laodicea. See, we're not ready for it. Amen? Amen. That's it. Now, if you don't believe it, can't take the pictures the best you can get them from her things last week. And look at the empty pews. But if I hear there's a sale down the roadside, the railroad track, you can't park to get to it. Last, last night, the, the tickets at Carolina, North Carolina, like they were over at Duke, were in the thousands of dollars. The TV networks made billions of dollars because that's whatever I was watching of the fans of those two major basketball teams. Amen? That's, it. that's what's got our attention. You know why these uh, travel ball leagues work on Sunday? It's because you parents send your young'uns. Amen. 
That's why they work. They wouldn't have a team if you kept your youngers home and in church where they ought to be. Disney World would have to close if it depended on my business. Amen. I'm telling you something. Whiskey stores would go out of business if it was up to me. I don't drink alcohol. And if, if we would quit doing all the things we want to stop, then all these things would come to an end in America. But we keep on doing them. Christians, we keep on doing them, and, and we expect a different result. But I'm going to tell you, it ain't going to be no different. The judgment's already been said. Amen. That's it. Amen. Amen. Thank you all very much. So he says, be patient. Therefore, that's that word, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Now, if you're in this building this morning and you're not a Christian, this book I'm holding right here won't make a bit of sense to you. It don't make a bit of sense to you uh, because it's just a written book and it won't mean nothing to you. You won't get what God intended to, until you become his child. That's why he wrote this book to you. He didn't write this child uh, to, to uh, the worldly people. He didn't write this book to worldly people. He wrote it to his children. It's like a love letter to his family. Here's what I want y'all to get. And he talked about our rebellion as his people. He talked about we had to hang up our musical instruments and quit singing because of the way we live. He talked about other these strange men coming in and, and, and robbing our homes and taking our daughters and our wives as their, as their sex slaves. We got that going on in the world today. They call it ISIS. Still going on because the men of God did not read the book of God and walk in the way of God so they'd be in the will of God. Yeah. And But yet, we're the whiningest people that's ever been born. We complain about everything that's going on and it's our fault that's going on. I heard this guy this morning when I was on the way to church. He was preaching a and it was about Naaman. Naaman, you all know, was the guy that was a leper. And he, uh, they sent very much treasure with him and, and sent him over here. And, and the prophet of God, the king, was worried to death because they sent him over here. And if he couldn't be healed or cured, then they were going to come over and punish the king and all that business. But Elijah, the man of God, said, send him to my house. Send him to my house. I got a word for him. And in my house. He came over there and Elisha said, Look here, go and wash in the river, Jordan. Seven times. <coughs> Seven times. This guy had brought hundreds of pounds of gold and silver as gifts. He was going to buy his healing. Elisha said, Just go dirty to the river and wash yourself. When you wash yourself, you won't have leprosy no more. <coughs> this is something. He was insulted. Are you serious? You want me to go to that dirty river when we got these clean flowing rivers in Syria and Samaria? Hey, sure. look at you want me to do. Are you serious? He packed the stuff up. The Bible said he was enraged about it. He packed the stuff up, was headed back home with leprosy. That's what we forget. When we throw that tantrum and pack our stuff up and head for home, we forget we still got letters. Oh, God, there we go. Me and me. We forget we carried that. We brought leprosy and we forgot. We just stuck it back under our wing. And we carried it back home with us. And so we're going back sick and mad. Anybody that's ever got trifling and run out of a church carried your sickness with you? I know. I told a young woman one night, leave this church. Because you just want to leave. But if you, before you leave, Straighten out what you got. Go to the people you have an issue with 
and talk to those people. Because if you don't, when you go to that next church you're going to go to, it becomes devil in it. You'll do the same thing over there. Come, come over there and, and straighten yourself up. You'll get right with the people around you. Then you'll be all right. That person's still out of church. That was years and years and years and years ago. Along with the husband. It impacted her and she will never be right if she don't get it right. And the reason I know she ain't right, she ain't never got right with me. So it don't matter where she goes and where she runs. She won't ever be right because you've got to come back. And I told y'all over and over and over, just patient be you, patient therefore, because the Lord's coming. That's what that's all about. Being ready, being stable, waiting for the call, the master's call. Amen. Amen. I told y'all during the service, I got called and railed on about things I didn't do. And I know it's been mild everywhere, but people railed on me ain't here this morning. They won't come and face the music. You know why? Because they're living like hell. But they feel the freedom to rail on preacher Tom. Demand of me. They don't give nothing or anything or participate. They're looking for a handout. And if you're here today looking for a handout, hand out. Amen. I just want you to know. I do not have to bend to that. I do not have to bow to that. I will not be subject to people like that who feel that we owe them something. Amen. Amen. The only person I owe something is God himself through Jesus Christ and for the great sacrifice that was made. I owe him my life. Amen. And I'll do what he leads me to do. And if it's that, I'll do that. Amen. Amen. But the coming of the Lord, the Lord's coming. Uh, and I don't want to be found in a, in a hateful state when the Lord comes. I want to be found uh, prepared with some oil in the lamp as the virgins were waiting, with oil in the lamp patiently waiting for the bridegroom to come. I want to be ready when I hear him cry out. The Bible said he's coming with a shout, with a trump. He's going to come at a moment we think not. Uh, but if we are looking for him, we'll be watching because we know he's coming. Amen. 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 Listen, Amen. let me tell you something about there's a crossroads in my house. Well, there's people down that, that they run that crossroads. They do come through there at 60 mile an hour. Stop signs. They're running. Here, here's what I'm thinking. My sons and daughters go through that crossroads. My granddaughters and grandsons. My neighbors. And one day, you know what they've learned to do? There's some of you there tell you. When you get to that crossroads, you slow down. You almost come to a stop. Because you've got to watch what the other people are doing. Patient. Be ye patient, therefore. We've got to learn where danger is as we patiently wait. We've got to learn where the places are we need to be especially careful. Therefore, that's that therefore. Based on the fact that we know the Lord's coming. Based on the very the fact that we know that what His Word is saying. We got to, we got to come here. Says the husband, that's the farm. Y'all know what a husband is, that's a farm. Waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. And have been long patient for it until he received the early latter rains. Be ye also patient. I can remember my, when we were forming, we were sure rock. We knew at the very best that we could. We could do at the end of the year was half of the problem. That was the, it. Don't matter. 
the very best we could do was half of, of their, all the debts we paid. I can remember that the little stores weren't very big in, in our in the country, and y'all know that. Uh, but they weren't very big. But the people that owned them would work with them. And they would they would tell it now, look here, I want to advance you this bunch of stuff. You about to, but look here, when your money comes in now, I want to be on the top of your list to be paid. And so here's what would happen. The guy that you farmed with would he would go to them people that you've done business with and pay them before you got paid. But when back at the beginning of that harvest, we just we just had to be we had to depend on the Lord. Not on our expertise, on how good a crop we could grow, but on the Lord. And we really didn't mind getting into horse stables or the mule stables then and working all day throwing manure out. Because that manure, we had a thing out there, we called it manure slinger. We got some of it in the pulpits today, slinging manure, but it ain't, it's not the profitable kind. But we'd work in there all day, Blake, uh, and digging with a shovel and throwing it on a thing and then go haul it to that manure slinger and hit sling it all in the fields. You know why we did that? Fertilizer. So we could get a harvest that would be sufficient so that we could take care of all our obligations. We were like dogs, day in and day out. They weren't no daddy, I'm tired, or mama, I'm tired, I don't feel like it. Get out there and get to work. Let me tell you something. Guys, that's what y'all miss. I don't want you to have to go through it, but you need it. You get bullheaded without it. Because I'm going to tell you, the CEO of, the, of these corporations ain't going to say, well, you poor thing, honey, let let me go in here and organize a time where you rest. Amen? I didn't realize I was overworking you. Lord, let me, let me go in here and rearrange all these. My mama said, you get over there and lay down now. We're going to be going back to work. Get over there and lay down. And that old hot fan that was blowing out there through there would be hot. And it was hot out there, 100 degrees out there. And you laying out there and I wanted to go out there and play ball. You see, I worked hard as I said I was, and that's exactly the truth of the church. The church ain't got all going on. They say they got going on either. And so the, the work ain't getting done. Amen. I couldn't do it. I went out there and played baseball after I found out I had, hey, it's up to you, but you're going to work at this time. And that's what the Lord does, left us all these instructions for, not stand here and argue about whether or not we think it's okay, but to do what he said so we can be in his will when he comes. We'll be ready and watching for him. Amen. And we'll be able to live during these times that we're living in that are hard times. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And I believe that. And I think that'll happen. I have hard times. I, I got up this morning. Y'all prayed over me and my wife for this crud we go through. We still got it. There are people, families that's had the flu three or four times. Courtney and his family have been through. The Lord knows how many times they've been through these babies. But look where they're at this morning. Amen. Are y'all kidding? Just get you another swig of that cough syrup and let's go. Amen? Amen. God, I thank you for being here. <laughs> With all the sickness we've had, I didn't expect this many. I thank you for being here, guys. But let me tell you something. We really, it really going on. But the last thing that ought to harm and hurt is the church. Don't, don't increase that all week. The last thing that ought to go lacking is here. Yeah. The last thing that ought to go live, be left undone is here. I mean, that's just the way of it. You and I know, and, and Walter there is a caregiver to lungs. And they got the lung, the people that do that, uh, they go around and they spray lawns for pre-emergent weeds. You don't know what a pre-emergent is, don't you? Well, it's going to come on out and you get it before it comes out and it won't, it won't touch your grass growth and all that stuff. They spray it. <coughs> and, and you know what it prevents? It prevents it. I started doing that a couple years ago and I didn't realize what in the world how it did work. I went up there and said, I don't to talk. I said, I've been there since 1984. How long is that? Like, if I had the shoes off, I can tell you. But I, since 1984, 
and I've been piddling around with that grass trying to get it to be pretty and green. Well, I finally found out two years ago how to do it. <laughs> get your spray, pour some liquid fertilizer in it, pour you some weed killer in it, pour whatever you need in it, <laughs> you got a pretty yard. I've wasted hundreds of dollars, and even up into thousands of dollars, to find this product, that product, putting it in at the wrong time, at the wrong temperature. This old boy said, do that twice a year, and you'll be all right, preacher. Load them in the truck. See, you ever went to have a conference? I'll take care of our, the yard of our life. <laughs> and come and just sit down and talk common sense, living as Christians, according to the Word of God. Instead of adding all this, I'm and you and they and we put he, God, He's the great governor of our life and soul. He's the great protector of those that are his. He's the great empower of those that are weak. He's everything. In fact, I, I see every night when I go to bed, I see him. Jesus Christ laying at the foot of my bed he, because he said I'm a good shepherd. Good shepherd get offered his life. You know what the shepherd does? When he says I'm the door, he laid himself in the door. And when that lion and that bear came and that wolf and all that, you remember David talking about the lion and the bear coming to his sheep and he killed them? That's the same, that's the same shepherd in the Jesus did. But yet, do y'all realize that the, that the announcement of Jesus was made to whom? To whom? Shepherds. shepherds. Why in the world do you think God made the announcement of his son to shepherds? Because they cared for the sheep. Because they cared for the sheep. And when God sent his son, he sent him a shepherd who would know his people, who would live and die for his sheep, and who would not lose his sheep. Be patient. Therefore. Because you know. You know. That the Lord is coming. Yeah. I can go over there after church today. And I'm out there with her. And take old Titus Caraway and squeeze him in my arm. He already knows. He already knows. He knows the shepherd. The shepherd come. Amen. I wonder what my new name's going to be. I don't believe it's going to be some of the names I've been called just this past week. sign from him that's when he says I can go. That's all I'm waiting for. Paul says right now it's better for me to be with y'all. But when he gives that sign, I'm ready. Ready to go, ready to be taken. Amen. Walk out of this valley called the shadow of death. Raise my hands and pray. Be you also patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord draw it now. We are, we are in a flight pattern for the guys leaving or coming to Myrtle Beach because over the, you see all these trail markings of these airplanes that we're in. A, there's a, if you were to look at the map of air control, you'd see that we're, we're, we're in a Pattern of it. They have patterns, and, and these these airplanes look like sometimes they're going to climb. They're stacked. They're, they're stacked at different feet, 
altitude. And, but it, what it looks like from the common eye that they're going to hit each other, they won't. If they, if they obey, listen now, you've got to get this. If they obey the air control. But I hear them. You hear them coming, but you don't see them yet. That's the way a Christian ought to be this morning about Jesus. You hear him coming, but you just don't see him yet. But he's on the way, ladies and gentlemen. He's on his way. And what's going to happen? Now listen to this. Didn't things pass over? And you can't see him then, but you see where he come by. Just like that all day and all night. You see him. You, you see, hear him coming, and you see where he come. The signs are there for a period of time. I can see the reports of the major networks as they report what has happened when Jesus come there. Somebody said, or I can just hear them. They're gonna have. They're gonna get all the chief of staff and the joint chief of staff in the military and see if they have discovered any aliens that might have come and gotten all those people. There's gonna be some heavy discussions in D.C. and with the world leaders. They're gonna call world leaders together. Some will be missing, and they'll wonder where they're at, why they were taken, and everybody else wasn't. That sounds foolish, doesn't it? But that's exactly the way it's going to happen. The mama and the baby and the daddy will be in the bed and the baby, they'll be searching all over. I was thinking the other day about Sandy and that lady, I don't remember her name. They're searching for the baby. The baby hid herself, disappeared. They called the police and everybody else, Kevin and them, they were and they come flying into the house and, and they were going to uh, shut everything down. That's what's going to happen when the Lord comes. If you're not ready, you, you sit and you're holding a baby and he disappears all of a sudden. Bam! You're going to call every police officer you know to find him. I was watching this morning where the Japanese were teaching their children how not to be uh, kidnapped. They were teaching them Fight and everything they need to do. Kick, squeal, fight, fight. Don't let nobody kidnap you. Come to your house and take you. Walk out with you. Fight every breath you got. Church, we quit fighting a long time ago. We were kidnapped by the devil. And we quit fighting. You know why? Because, I hate to say this, I'm talking my generation now, now it's your generation. Because our children got involved in it. And we couldn't take a stand when it was our children. We had rose colored glasses on when we looked through the lens at our children. So what should have divided us a long time ago? All you see now is our children are our best friends. I've never had a better friend than you. No, 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 no. That's your daughter and your son. You don't have children to have friends. That's what happened. That's what happened in the church. We became friends with our children. Instead of nurturing and bringing them up in the law of the Lord. We provoke them to wrath, as it says in the scripture. By our waiting and our patience, we provoked our children and to wrath. Amen. And so what we've got is we've got a mess. We got a mess. And we, and we live in a world, there ain't no need debating out there that our world's evil, because it is. There ain't no need debating that the church is wrong, because we are. I mean, how long are we going to be debating? How long? Sin has always been wrong, yeah. But now we're debating what sin is. We're debating what sin is. What is sin? <laughs> We define it. It ain't what I'm doing, it's what she's doing. So nobody sins anymore. Because the wages of sin ain't death no more. 
gift of God's eternal life. We like to dwell on that side of it. But see, God don't, don't wake up every day and say, well, I'm going to make a new decision today about sin. It's already been judged. Before we ever got here in sin, sin already had a judgment. And that judgment was death. And that's exactly when God created man, Adam, and Eve, and then there were generations of man, and put them in there. What did he say to them? The very minute you sin, you shall surely die. Isn't that what he said? The very minute you eat, he said eat of the fruit of that tree. But that's sin, because if you eat of it, you've got to disobey him. If you disobey him, that's sin. See, those are the things we can't put together. I'm not a murderer. See, y'all remember what the Bible said about the law of God? If you give me of any of it, you give me of all of it. And so it don't matter which part of it you. you it's the same power, impact on his death. That's what he's, there, he's trying to tell us while we're living here. Sometimes when we're trying to be patient, we get in a mess because our hands get out and our minds get out and we just say, well, the Lord's coming, I'm going to give up. Amen. And our churches are in a mess. But there's going to be, there's a remnant. The Bible says there's a remnant. That have not been touched. There's hope. Jesus is still our hope. He, the door's still open. If he said, if any man will open it, I'll let him in. I mean, he's not closed up anything yet. We've done all the closing. We've done all the turning away. We're not waiting in patience. And so when we think about all this stuff, we think about the Word of God. How much more Word do we need to preach? We need to preach it all the time. How much more song do we need to sing? We need to sing the hymns of, of Zion. We need to sing the songs unto the Lord. The hymns of the Bible are the songs. They sing songs. Even Jesus sang songs. You, you sing the song, and the psalmist talks about praise all the time. We need to do something, don't we? We need to realize that our waiting has not been patient. <laughs> I'm going to read some with you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband waiting for the precious fruit of the earth, and have long patience for it until he receives the latter and the early. Early in other things, be ye also patient. Establish your heart for the coming of the Lord. Draw nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standing before the door. Take my brethren the prophets who had spoken in the name of the Lord for an example. Of suffering affliction and of patience. So we're going we're gonna to have to suffer some stuff. We're going to have to go through some stuff. And, but yet we're going to have to have patience as we wait on the Lord during these troubled times of our life. You know, I, they might have always, but I read a lot about little children and having cancer now. I don't remember hearing, of course, I don't know if they knew what cancer was when I was doing that. They might not have. I don't know. But little children being born with cancer. We heard just last week or the week before three people had the king that we were praying for with children. Y'all know that's a form of it, you know? Uh, I read somewhere yesterday where so many children who had cancer left St. Jude's, they were healed of cancer. What a blessing it is to realize that some of these things that are happening. But you know, if you go back in the, in the Bible, we don't have time for this, and I'm not going there, but I just want to tell you this. If you're tracing people in the wilderness, the little children, you know, when, when these things came on, they came on the little children too. You know, when they, when they met up in the upper room, there were little children there too. Children have always been in the mix of the church of the living God. In fact, the Bible said, except you become as a little child, you can't see me. Little 
child's honest. I mean, you see a little child, you see a little child. That's what little children are on. But you know what happens to children? Their parents mold them to be what they want them to be. Or the government or whoever has the greater authority in our society. Now, we, we do foolish things. Just let me use this to show you how foolish we are. Somebody made a suggestion when we're changing an infant's diaper, we need to ask permission before we change it. We're invading their privacy. Now that's really silly, isn't it? but that's being suggested. Now we wait three years old before we write whether or not they're male or female on their birth certificate. That's another suggestion. So, you know, by that time we might decide which one they are. Huh? But yet, we accost the little girl who has an ash cross. forehead there's something wrong our waiting is going to be very different it all depends on who it is as to what we condone or not that's a the church issue it all depends on who it is where it's centered We're getting ready to meet for a Tuesday, back Tuesday afternoon. I'm going to a meeting, Lord willing, about sexual harassment in church. It's become a problem in Southern Baptist Church. We have, we have had over in our study, we've had over 200 cases recently. Recent. We certainly were quick to criticize the Catholics. At the same time, when we were criticizing with that hand, we were playing around with you. Amen. We do that a lot with other things too, by the way. But y'all pray for us. Research is good, but I'm going to tell you what's greater is we got to develop a path through the Word of God. I mean, how do we get so converted to this LS Jewish section? Come on, somebody help me. But it's an issue. So y'all pray about that. But I'm going to ask you to stand. If you're here today and you're lost, before they even play, they're going to have a song there. But I'm going to ask you to come. And be willing. Like, can I talk with you about Christ and your acceptance? If you would, if you would just come, I'll talk to you about Christ. Anybody? Anybody?